Writing a scientific grant is very different from writing a research paper, and that can make it really challenging for a lot of academics who don't have much experience in grant writing. And so with this short video, we are first going to discuss how to think about your grant proposal in contrast with your research paper. And then we are going to cover a bit about who grant reviewers actually are and what the grant review process looks like. All of this to help you get in the appropriate mindset for writing your scientific research grant. So I am Casey Butler here with Butler SciComm and let's get started. So to start, when I start my workshops on writing a grant proposal, I always start with this graphic here and I ask the attendees how they think about their research grant. If they think about it more like a magazine or like a newspaper. So I want you to take a second here. Think about it for yourself. Think about how you consider your grant proposal, magazine or newspaper. So in my workshops, about half of the attendees tend to pick magazine and half tend to pick newspaper. But here in this video, I'm going to walk you through why I think the answer is magazine and why thinking about your grant proposal like a magazine can help completely adjust your mindset when you go into writing this proposal and can help you write a more successful proposal. So first, with a magazine versus a newspaper, we can think of this a little bit like your proposal, like I just said, is a bit like a magazine, and a research paper is a bit like a newspaper. And the first difference here, the first point here, is somebody who comes in and picks up a newspaper or who opens a research paper is inherently interested in that information that is included in that document, okay? So somebody who wants to look at your research paper wants to learn something about this topic be it what you did or what you saw or some technique that you used but they are interested in learning something about this topic on the contrary though somebody who picks up a magazine is often just kind of flipping through it wants to see what's going on that month they're not necessarily so interested in what is actually contained in the magazine and similarly with your grant proposal unfortunately the people who are reading these proposals didn't come in to be like, man, I really want to know what this lab is working on right now. No, they came in here with the sole purpose of reading your grant, judging your grant and determining if you get money. So there is actually already a huge difference here between somebody who is inherently interested in the information you're providing and somebody who is actually not interested in the information that you're providing only in if you can successfully carry out this research project. So right here, there's a split in between how we're gonna think about our research paper versus our grant proposal. And with that, that changes the amounts and types of information that are gonna be in each of these documents. So for your research paper or for this, for this newspaper, it's gonna be fairly comprehensive coverage of this topic, of maybe a very narrow topic, but still fairly comprehensive within that narrow range. Whereas the magazine doesn't need to be comprehensive because again, the reader is not coming here to learn about this topic. They want to learn if you can do this research. So you don't have to tell them everything. You just have to tell them what they need to know to make that decision. So with your research paper, you then are trying to fit as much information as you can within the confines of your research paper on your research topic. Whereas with your grant proposal, that's not the point at all. Here with this grant proposal, you want to interest a reader. You want to show them the importance of your project. You want to keep and hold their attention throughout so that you make sure that they're picking up on all the important points. And ultimately, you want to sell your science to this reviewer and convince them that this is a project worth doing and that you know how to do it. This is a huge difference between the two with the research paper putting a lot of that burden onto the reader. And it's the same with the newspaper. When you pick up one of these documents, it is on you to read it carefully enough to make sure that you understand what the author is telling you. Whereas then in the grant proposal, this burden shifts 
this burden is no longer on the reader of the article to catch this information. It is on you as a writer of this document to make that information easy to find, written clearly so that somebody can quickly understand it, and make sure that it is focused here to the key points. So we're going from a information dense document where it is the reader's job to sort of read it and digest it and get what they can out of it to a sales document where it is your job as a writer to make this clear and obvious as absolutely possible and ultimately convince your reviewer to fund your work. And so also, we're even going to move away from how a newspaper or research paper looks. Instead of providing mainly paragraphs of densely packed text, we're going to change it up and we're going to make it, yes, a flashier document because we want to be able to catch and hold our reader's attention. We want to make our key points impossible to miss. We are going to use formatting as our friend here. We are going to do things like create subheadings, make spacing throughout the document, break up long paragraphs, add in text formatting like bold, italics, underline, highlight, even changing the color of our text to make sure that when we make a key point, it is obvious to the reader and there is no way that they're going to be able to miss this. And then finally, our research paper or our newspaper is going to be fairly dense reading. Again, it is information packed. It is heavy in that information you want the reader to know. Whereas conversely, our grant should not be that. Our grant should in fact be fairly easy reading. It should be something that a busy reviewer is going to be able to sit down and read and understand without too much stress, too much thought, too much extra work on their part to try to figure out what you are telling them. So now we know a little bit about how we want to think about our grant proposal. Let's talk a little bit about who's going to look at that grant proposal to sort of try to determine also why we want to think about our proposal this way. So I have to state here, first and foremost, your grant reviewers are people. And I know maybe that sounds a little bit too obvious, but it needs to be stated because when we're writing this proposal, we need to remember that we are not writing to computers or machines or robots. We are writing to people. And not only are they people, they are busy people because your grant reviewers tend to have full-time jobs outside of reviewing grants, often in academia. And so your busy academic grant reviewers with full-time jobs in academia that we all know don't end at 40 hours a week are also still, again, outside of their jobs, people with families and spouses and children and pets that they want to spend time with and have to take care of that also have things that they do outside of grant reviews, hobbies, other things that they enjoy doing. And so this time spent reading and reviewing your grants is time taken away from all of those other things that they enjoy doing. So here we're going to adjust our thinking in a couple key ways to sort of hopefully better relate to our grant reviewers. First, like I already mentioned before in the previous section, we need to make our grant as easy to read and review as possible. And we're gonna do this by thinking about what we would like to read if we were dropped this document on our laps and told that we had to read this and review it in our extra spare time. And on top of that, we want to write in such a way that somebody doesn't have to try to sit down and focus on this 100% of their attention all the time and not be able to move away from it and come back if they need to. We want to write this for busy people who have short attention spans because when you have a lot of things going on, you have short attention spans. So we're gonna use things here in our grant like short paragraphs and spacing so that it is easy for somebody to read a paragraph and stop if they need to and pick up again where they left off. We're going to use subheadings to make key parts stand out so a person can have a small refresher in their brain when they get to a new paragraph or a new section of, okay, this is what we're gonna be discussing here. Or conversely, if they need to go back and find something that you had said previously, it's easy to flip back through the grant without having to reread all of it because you have it clearly labeled and separated out subheadings with spacing. Then we're gonna take those key points, those key statements, 
And first, we're going to state them very, very clearly so that they are impossible to miss. Instead of just writing about the broader impacts, for instance, we're going to have sentences that actually say the broader impacts are, and to make it absolutely impossible to miss those key sentences, we are going to use text formatting to make sure that they stand out. We're going to make those sentences bold or italic or change their color of the font so that when a reviewer gets to that page, their eyes are going to go straight to that bold text and it's going to stick out in their head. Okay, this is what the broader impacts of this grant are. This is exactly what we want to do for busy people to make sure that they don't have to study our grant to get that key information. And then the converse of this is we want to make sure that our grant reviewer has no excuse to throw out our grant without reading it. Because if they can find some reason why your grant is disqualified, that's one less grant that they have to spend time on and focus on. So we're not going to give them a reason to do that. We're going to follow all the rules. We're going to give them all the documents they need. We're not going to stray from those formatting boundaries. And I know every year or every grant season even, I get somebody who, let's say, thinks they're the first person to discover that you can shrink the line spacing between lines to fit in a few more lines of text. Now, as somebody who reads papers all day, every day for a living, I can promise you that every time I open a paper, as soon as I open it, I can tell you immediately if that line spacing is off. Your grant reviewer, who is going to be reading tons of these grants that all have to have the same font size and the same formatting, is going to be able to do the exact same thing. And there are rules about how many lines you can have per inch in a grant. So that is going to be a way that you can be disqualified if you're shrinking that line spacing. So we're not going to do that. We're going to follow all the rules. We're going to make our text fit within the bounds of what they give us for this grant and not give our reviewer a reason to throw our grant out unscored. And so for the final part of this video here, we're going to discuss just a little bit about what a typical grant review process can look like so you have an idea as well of how to think about putting the information in your grant to best optimize your chances in this review process. First, grants are usually reviewed by a panel or a committee. So you have a number of scientists together who have a batch of grants that they need to score and discuss and recommend specific ones for funding. Now, not every person on this committee is going to read every grant. The grants get split up with one to two experts usually reading each one of the grants and then they come together in the end to discuss these all together and discuss which ones should be funded or put forth for funding. And so what this means is that the people who are reading your grants are going to be scientists. They're going to be good scientists and experts in their field, but their field is not necessarily your field. So first thing here that this tells us with writing our grants as well, we need to optimize our grant such that it can be easily understood by scientists, but not experts in our field. So this is also a bit of a different level than writing a research paper which you can write a little bit more towards your specific field. Here, we want it to be broadly accessible to make sure that our non-expert scientists are going to be able to follow along. Then, each reviewer often will sort the grants initially when they get them into an A pile and a B pile, with the A pile being the ones that are more likely to be funded and the B pile being the ones that are less likely to be funded so they can ensure they spend the more time and more brain space on those grants that are going to have a better chance of being funded. So how do they make this initial first selection? That is usually based on that first page or cover page of your grant. It might be called a cover page, a specific aims page, summary page, abstract. The first page of your grant is usually how this selection is made. So this first page is not going to be an afterthought. It is a very important, one of the most important pages of your whole entire grant. And so a focus really needs to go into making as good of a first page as absolutely possible. Next, your grant reviewer then will typically spend between 90 to 120 minutes on each grant. That is not a lot of time 
Okay, think about how much time it would take you to just sit down and read 15 pages from beginning to end. It's a while. So we want to make sure everything is clear, that they don't have to be doing outside research for our grant, that they don't have to be looking at a bunch of other things, they don't have to be going back and rereading stuff over and over, that they don't have to actually hunt for those key points that they need to score. They, they don't have to think extra about, is this the broader aims? Is that the broader aims? Which one is it? We want to make it absolutely clear. So they're just going through and they can be like, oh yes, broader aims there. Check. Good. Okay. So we want to make this as easy as possible. Make it so that your reviewer has to do the least amount of work possible to try to understand and digest and judge our grant. And then finally, at the end of this whole process, the panel or committee comes together in the end and discusses the grants and talks about which ones they think should be funded. So what you really want and what you're aiming for here is to write a grant that is so solid and so convincing that your reviewer goes into this committee meeting ready to stand up and fight and go to bat for your specific grant and to convince the other people that your specific grant is one that we want to be funded. So we're going to work on making this a document that was easy to read, that didn't cause them a lot of pain uh, when, when they were trying to read it, or solid blocks of text, or really dense writing, or lots of facts that they had to sort through. We're going to make it concise and clean and neat and convincing. And on top of that, we're going to go back to that formatting again. And we are going to use things like subheadings and spacing and section breaks and that key colored text to make it such that when the committee is in this panel meeting, it will be easy for your reviewer and for the other people on the committee to flip to key sections, find that key text easily, quickly for themselves to answer any questions that they might have about your grant. If somebody asks, hey, what were the broader impacts of your grant? It should be easy for everybody sitting in that meeting for somebody to say, hey, okay, they're on page eight. Everybody flips to page eight. There's a section that says broader impacts. There's a highlighted piece of text that says the broader impacts are, and it's quick and easy and simple for everybody to find this information and use this information. Okay, so hopefully now, knowing a little bit how to think about your grant, who reviews your grant and what the review process looks like can help shape and set your grant writing mindset. So when you go into your grant, with this grant writing mindset, I find that it helps eliminate immediately a lot of the most common mistakes I see in grant writing. Now, if you're interested in what the biggest mistakes I see in grant writing are, uh, there's a link to a blog post in the description of this video. And shortly, we're going to be posting videos as well about what those biggest mistakes are. So subscribe to my channel here to make sure that you get those videos in the future. And you can always go to my website for a bit more information on grant writing. Otherwise, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me here in the comments. I will answer every one. And now that you have your mindset ready to write your grant, happy writing.